So Bernie Sanders is a Dick Cheney Democrat. I know. Just ripping this Band-Aid off here. The, once again, the most fabulous nutless wonder himself is saying that uh, he he's okay. He's okay with, um, you know, that good old uh, Cheney is all on board with, uh, you guessed it, Kamala Harris. So first of all, Let's go ahead and pull up this video here. Shout out to Savvy Sav. This MF is a mess. If he really was concerned about billionaire influence of both parties, he wouldn't support either party. Well, let me ask you about some of her ties to uh, big business. Top Silicon Valley companies and big name venture capitalists have reportedly uh, been in close communication with the Harris campaign. I'm talking about Mark Cuban, LinkedIn co-founder, Reid Hoffman. From a practical standpoint, a lot of her supporters argue those ties might make sense. She's been accused of being too liberal, for example, by Republicans. Are you concerned at all about the ties to those big names, those top earners? Well, Kristen, what you're really touching on is maybe the most important issue. And that is whether you're a Democrat, Republican or independent, you should be concerned about the this impact of the disastrous Supreme Court decision on Citizens United that today allows billionaires, whether they're Elon Musk and the Republicans or whether they are Democratic billionaires, to play a very, very outsized role in the political process. Look, mm. you have one vote, the average American has one vote, but billionaires can start a super PAC and put hundreds of millions of dollars, tens of millions of dollars into defeating the people they don't like and supporting the people they do like. That is not democracy. That is oligarchy. And I would hope that every American regardless of your political persuasion, says we got to get rid of the Citizens United and return to a nation where one person has one vote and that's democracy. Yeah, that's great. But, you know, being all on board, being against Citizens United, and then, oh, wait, applauding Cheney, not only his daughter, but Dick Cheney himself is supporting Kamala. Gee, you know, all this money in politics and corruption was really intensifying under the Bush-Cheney administration. But hey, Bernie, consistency really isn't a Democratic thing, is it? Uh, Senator, before I let you go, I do have to ask you about her recent endorsements by two people who are not progressives at all. Of course, I'm talking about Dick and Liz Cheney this week. They said they're going to support her. They're going to vote for her. It's worth noting uh, former Congresswoman Liz Cheney voted with former President Trump more than 90 percent of the time, was quite critical when uh, President Biden picked her as his running mate. Would you welcome seeing Liz Cheney out on the campaign trail? Well, Kristen, what I think Dick and Liz Cheney are saying is that in this, we got to stop Trump. We got to stop Trump because Trump's a bad man. Donald Trump is a very, 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 very bad man. Existential moment in American history. It's not just issues. Cheney and I agree on nothing, no issues. But what we do believe in is that the United States should retain its democratic foundations. And it's not just Cheney. I think there is a significant number of Republicans that say, well, you know, I may not agree with the vice president on this issue or that issue, but I cannot support somebody who is a pathological liar, somebody who fomented a, a insurrection to overthrow the election return. So I applaud the Cheneys for their courage in defending democracy, obviously, on all the issues. We have very different points of view. All right. All right. Yeah. Hey, all right. Great. Whatever. You cuck. Here's what Kamala had to say in regards to the endorsement from the Cheneys. Actually, I'm honored to have their endorsement. And I think that um, what they both as leaders who are well-respected are making an important statement that um, it's okay and if not important to put country above party. And um, I'm honored to have their support. And I think it's an important statement right now. A lot of what I think it's happening, and I was just talking with some folks here in Pittsburgh about it, is that people are exhausted about the division and, and the attempts to kind of divide us as Americans. And um, them stepping up to make this public statement, I think, is uh, courageous, but also for people like the folks I was just talking with, it really reinforces for them that we love our country and we have more in common than what separates us.
Uh huh. Great. It's more of more, more of a tease. More 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 of a word salad. You you got an endorsement from a corrupt individual who is pretty much, if not one of the main causes, but one of the contributors to this neoliberal nightmare. Remember, we're in a lot of problems because of the Bush-Cheney administration, okay? But of course, his daughter comes rolling in, says, uh, of course, we have to invoke the great spirit of Ronald Reagan. Look. It's okay, you know, to maybe respect somebody. The way Reagan's being put up on a pedestal Next thing you know, they're going to put him on the golden throne and he'll be the next god emperor of humanity. But uh, all right, uh, there's no chance Reagan would be supporting Donald Trump, even though in Trump's first administration, he had a lot of people of the Bush Cheney administration who were within his administration. And by the way, a lot of those people in the Bush Cheney administration were diehard followers and supporter of Ronald Reagan and his administration. So this whole idea of what would Ronald Reagan do? What would Ronald Reagan do? I don't know. But there's a lot of people who are with Ronald Reagan who supported Trump, who are in his administration, and still do to this day. It's an extraordinary reordering of the whole political system on when it comes to national security. Who would Ronald Reagan be supporting in this race? What do the, you think? There, there is absolutely no chance that Ronald Reagan would be supporting Donald Trump. Donald Trump doesn't stand for any of the things that Ronald Reagan did. Uh, and it's another place where I would urge my Republican colleagues, uh, both in the Congress, but, but across the country, um, to really look at Donald Trump's policies, to really look at the danger that he presents, uh, to look at, at you know, what he was willing to do to stay in power. Uh, it's, it's a firm rejection, not just of traditional Republican policies, but but of the constitutional order on which this country depends. You know, it's really sad that um, this is where we're at. And tomorrow, Trump and Kamala are going to have their little fantastic debate, which will be mediocre. I mean, maybe it might be entertaining. Who knows what happens? But there's this whole talk now of, oh, my goodness, look at all these people allying up with uh, Kamala to stop Trump. And I get it. Donald Trump triggers a lot of people. But look at who's making this coalition happen. You've got the worst of the worst. I mean, many people, whether they know it or not, inadvertently helped create the rise of somebody like Donald Trump. Okay? You have neoliberal and neoconservative Democrats and Republicans working together. You have corporate media. You have all the Hollywood elite all trying to prop up Kamala into something that she is not. Now, it won't matter who sits on the throne, in my opinion, because it, it doesn't. But you're having the Cheneys now being praised as these great heroes for helping Kamala, which I must add, okay, so they're helping out Kamala Harris. They're going to, what, help her get into the White House to make sure that, what, nothing fundamentally changes? The reason why we have problems in the Middle East is because of the actions of the Bush-Cheney administration. The reason why we have such a crumbling economy is because of the actions of the Bush-Cheney administration. The reason why housing is impossible is because of the Bush-Cheney administration. The reason why infrastructure is falling apart is because of the Bush-Cheney administration. And yet, these same people are now propping up Kamala. Now, that doesn't make Trump the end-all, be-all savior, because he ain't. But how should I? why should I respect the Democrats when they're more than happy to have the entire political establishment coalesce around them? Talk about a big tent party. Hey, AOC, what's it like rubbing shoulder to shoulder with somebody like Dick Cheney? She probably doesn't give a damn. She'll put on a fake show and say, like, oh, I care about this, I care about that. But I at least want to have a palate cleanser here. So let's actually talk about this because Tucker Carlson actually had some comments about this. What they actually care about is the ability to continue to fight pointless wars because that's where all the money is. That's where all the money is. And if you don't believe it, maybe you haven't checked your phone today to see that Dick Cheney and his horrible daughter have endorsed Kamala Harris. Dick Cheney. Now, why is that? What does Dick Cheney have in common with Kamala Harris? And it's really interesting, actually, because they're constantly telling us that the divides are along race and gender. And they were always telling us Rick, Dick Cheney is this rich white guy and Kamala Harris is this oppressed woman of color. They've got nothing in common, but actually they have everything in common. 
because they're both neocons. That's exactly right. They have everything in common. And it tells you what a lie this race and gender stuff is. That's not the divide. The divide is in your heart. And if you think it's okay to kill people in order to get rich, you're on their side. And if you don't, you're on our side, no matter what you look like. And so what's the significance of all this? What can we learn from the failures of our politicians, from the failures of all these jagoff leaders? It's always been a big club. It doesn't matter. They have an agenda. More wars, more bailouts for banks, more support for Wall Street, politicians getting richer, and all of you getting poorer. There's a reason why our lives have been improving these last past decades. It's because they're all in on it. Yes, they put on this fight, but dare I say it, you see more of an interaction and more physical confrontation and real authentic passion in the wrestling ring watching something from WWE. There I say it, even if you rewind back time, you see more action and passion and more truth in the wrestling rings at ECW or WCW. Now, why am I bringing that up? Because at least, look, at the end of the day, you know, they're putting on a show. These politicians are supposed to be our leaders. They're putting on a show of, oh, we care, but they don't. Their constituents are starving, yet they say that they care. Their constituents are homeless, yet the politicians say that they care. Their constituents lost a loved one, and yet the politicians say that they care. Tell us, folks. When's the last time you saw a senator or a House representative get their hands dirty by actually going and helping out frontline workers during a natural disaster? When was the last time you saw a politician actually fight for its for their citizens and constituents when they're homeless on the streets? Oh, that's right. You've never seen that, have you? Oh, hey, you know, we got a lot of politicians dump their chest and say we must go to war. You ever see them put on uh the body armor, grab a weapon and go to the front line? No. No Republican or Democratic politician would ever do that. Imagine that. What a sight it would be if we had a Caesar, a U.S. president, lead the front lines. But that's too much because that'll never happen. And yet Cheney supporting Kamala. What a sight, eh? You see, folks, there is such thing as bipartisanship. Democrats and Republicans can work together. Now, I know there will be some liberals saying, but Trump this, Trump that. I get it. Okay? And as far as I'm concerned, nothing will fundamentally change. The only difference is at least, once again, people will be made aware of just how corrupt our system is. Because Trump, to his credit, revealed how corrupt our system truly is. He took off the fancy neoliberal mask and showed the country just how effed up it is because of previous Democratic and Republican politicians. Now, I don't know how this election will play out, and I don't know what's going to happen on debate night tomorrow. But I do know one thing. If you think you've ever had a seat at the table, you've been lied to. If you ever thought that your politician cares for you, you've been lied to. I'm so sorry. Your Democratic and Republican lawmakers, they do not like you. They do not think about you. And they don't respect you. And even after this election night is over and you still believe in voting Democrat or Republican, no matter who wins, be it Trump or Kamala. If you still think that you're in their hearts and minds, I love you, but you're not being a serious person and you have to wake up. We are in an abusive relationship with these politicians. Citizen ballot initiatives are the way. This is how we get our power back. Since these politicians want to play this game of same old, same old, where nothing fundamentally changes, then fine. They made it clear that they don't want us, they don't like us, they don't respect us. Did they ever think that maybe we could do the same to them? Because right now, they haven't done anything to earn our respect. And they never will. Because that's what abusers do. They don't like us. So it's time to break this abusive relationship.